Hello friends! Welcome back, my name is Ramon, and I'm coming at you with some quality content for the summer. In today's video, I'm going to be expanding once again on my simplified series where I discuss skincare topics, ingredients, or products in a more simplified format. Today we're discussing the topic of retinoids. Before we get into it, I'm going to ask that you subscribe, hit the notification bell so that you know when I post more of these simplified videos and other videos on my channel, and comment down below what you enjoyed about this video or what else you want to see on the simplified series as well. I also want to emphasize that I am in no way a doctor or an esthetician, but everything I'm speaking about today is in the regards of a biochemistry student. I'm also about to start a cosmetic formulations degree program, therefore I'm also talking about things in a cosmetic formulation standpoint, so keep that in mind. So retinoids. What are retinoids? Basically, it is the family of compounds that are related to or derived from vitamin A, period. Cut to the chase, cut to the feeling. Oh, yeah, sword! It is basically that girl when it comes to skincare ingredients. It does everything for your skin possible. It is one of the gold standard ingredients. So if you don't got retinoids in your skincare routine, guess them. Explaining what vitamin A is, Vitamin A occurs naturally in the skin in the form of retinoic acid. Keep that in mind, it's gonna come up again. But with the topical application of vitamin A in the form of retinoic acid or its derivatives, we see a lot of benefits. Anti-aging, basically kind of uh, softening the appearance of fine lines and wrinkles, acne prevention and treating active breakouts, brightening hyperpigmentation and scarring in the skin, softening skin texture and pore texture. And basically a lot of that comes down to how the vitamin A reacts with the skin when it comes in contact with the retinoid receptors in strengthening the extracellular matrix. That's basically the promotion and strengthening of the collagen, elastin, and hyaluronic acid in the dermis. It speeds up the cell turnover process in the skin, and in doing so, that's how it really promotes the building of the collagen and elastin in the skin, thus giving you a much more plump, full texture in the skin. That's how it reduces the hyperpigmentation in the skin by kind of increasing the process and bringing new, younger, brighter skin to the surface. And it also helps reduce the inflammation with acne, bringing those breakouts down, as well as helping to prevent the causes of blocked pores in the skin, thus preventing future breakouts. Retinoic acid is the most biologically direct form of the active ingredient, vitamin A. And explaining how it works and what it is, let's get into the types that you can get, the types that are available. So there's two main types of retinoids. Again, retinoids is the overall name for the family. It's the umbrella term for everything but you can get non-prescription over-the-counter so when you go to the drugstore Sephora what's available more commercially and cosmetically and then you have prescription which is only available via your primary care doctor or dermatologist I'm gonna flash below a little graphic which is gonna be really important in kind of explaining the process and how it works so going from the least direct to the most direct I have retinal palmitate retinols oh well retinaldehydes or retinals AL, and then retinoic acid, again, the most pure, straightforward form, right? And so essentially what cosmetically you're able to get over the counter is the last three. So how it works is that each step you are away from retinoic acid, you're about tenfold less potent, less powerful. And within each step, there is a conversion or an oxidation that's required in the skin. The further you are away from retinoic acid, due to that conversion factor, the least powerful you're getting. So retinol palmitate is the least potent. It's considered to be like a storage form of vitamin A. It's like the sleeper version of it. It's not really effective. You really shouldn't really focus on it, but it does exist. So I'm gonna explain it to you. We don't know her. Next step, so one level of conversion up, you have retinols. And that's kind of like the first step in the pure form of vitamin A. Retinols in themselves are highly unstable, but they can be encapsulated to be more stable, but also to give them more of a time release effect. And again, these are retinols, which are a form of retinoids. You A lot of times hear retinol is kind of like an umbrella term, but that's not correct. They are one of the derivatives from retinoic acid. After one more level of conversion, you get to retinaldehydes, and retinaldehydes are the most potent form of commercially available retinoids. They're one step away from retinoic acid, therefore they only require one conversion step to become that purest form. All of the steps end up getting you to retinoic acid eventually, it's just how many conversions are involved, and as a result, how potent is it gonna be in the end, you know? So if you can't get any of these, retinols are most common and most available, but retinaldehydes or retinals are the most powerful strength you can get through Sephora or through any like cosmetic brands you have easily accessible. And then you get to retinoic acid, the most direct biological form of retinoids. It's good as is, no conversion required, batteries included. Essentially, once it's applied to the skin, because there's no conversion required, you get the direct benefits right away. Notes, retinoic acid, which has a lot of different names, tretinoin, retin-A, whatever brand names you get pharmaceutically, is a drug. As a result of that, it's only available again through prescription, which is 
what makes it different from retinaldehydes, retinols, retinal palmitates. So with the three derivatives of retinoic acid, because you find them a lot in commercially available cosmetics, a lot of times the formulas that they're in feature a lot of other things like botanical extracts, alcohol to help them permeate a little bit better, as well as hydrating and moisturizing properties. You can get them in a lot of products like the Sunday Riley and Drunk Elephant Retinoids, the Ordinary Grand Active Retinoids, which we're gonna talk about in a second, as well as stuff from like Peter Thomas Roth, Murad, Kate Somerville, Aven, etc. Getting into prescription strength retinoids, mainly direct retinoic acid. Again, since it's the most direct, it's the most potent, you need a doctor to prescribe it to you. With that potency, you run the risk of high irritation because it's so strong. But with that, it's the gold standard of vitamin A ingredients derivatives. It's the most studied in this form, it's the most researched, it's the most proven in that retinoic acid form. All the other derivatives, do have more recent studies, but there's not enough time put into those and enough time to kind of see the overall effects and benefits of the retinoid derivatives as there is with retinoic acid directly, because it's been studied for decades at this point. Retinoic acid was kind of discovered decades ago in a study. Initially, it was studied to be an acne treatment, and through these studies, they kind of realized those who actually had the retinoic acid being applied to them exhibited really promising signs of anti-aging benefits. So that's when it was kind of discovered like, oh, like, she can do that for you in terms of giving you the age reversing benefits. So again, I use a tretinoin topically prescribed gel that I asked for my doctor. I just went to my doctor and I was like, hey, I need tretinoin for acne treatments. And she was like, what acne? <laughs> but she gave it to me and yeah. Another form of retinoids, prescription strength retinol, is adapalene. And again, there's a lot of forms of this prescription strength retinoin, but adapalene is one that's recently become available over the counter. And what makes adapalene different and that you can get it over the counter is that while it does exhibit some of the same benefits as tretinoin, chemically, structurally, it's a little bit different so that it doesn't affect the same quantity of retinoid receptors in the skin, and it more specifically targets acne. So if you have breakouts and you're younger and you don't have the necessary concern for anti-aging, adopting, you can get mad cheap at like Target, Walmart, drugstore, but if you're looking for more anti-aging benefits of retinoids, ask for retinoin. Other retinoid derivatives that are available right now include hydroxypinacolone retinoate, HPR, which is an ingredient that you see most commonly now in the Ordinary's Grand Active Retinoid formulas. And what those are is essentially they're retinoic acid esters. And so in this like weird tree of retinoids, it is actually kind of like a direct sister, a direct conversion, not even, it doesn't convert direct sister of retinoic acid that doesn't require conversion, which again, retinaldehydes, retinol, and retinol palmitate are require conversions. This doesn't. As soon as it's applied topically to the skin, it affects retinoid receptors in a similar manner to tretinoin, retinoic acid. So it's promising in that regard. So since it doesn't necessarily require conversions, it ideally would give you a very direct benefit, right? Well, here's the tea on that. So essentially, there's not a lot of studies. There's not a lot of claims. There's not actually any real pharmaceutical studies. The studies behind it were actually done by Estee Lauder Corporation, which is a cosmeceutical company. It hasn't been peer reviewed. It's not like an actual scientific study. And it's semi-biased because it's from the actual company that's selling it itself. Since it's available in the Ordinary products, and the Ordinary is owned by Desium, which is owned by Estee Lauder, it's a very like subjective claim to make. So while there's potential promise in it, there's no actual scientific backing that that is a situation, that is the case. Again, going back to the other derivatives of retinoic acid directly, with those, there's not the same kind of studies that there are with retinoic acid itself. So even with those, while there is a lot of promise, more so than with HPR, it's still not this big, like, it is Bible situation. There's also retinol retinoate, which is available in some Kate Somerville products, for example. And what that is, is the combination of retinol and retinoic acid. And so how that works is, again, Retinol in itself, it's encapsulated. So what that is is basically you have the retinoic acid, which is the direct form of vitamin A, kind of giving you a more immediately direct response from the retinoid receptors in the skin once it's applied topically. But on top of that, you have the advantage of the encapsulated retinol, so you have more of a slow time release response from those as well. So you have that combination of things giving you a double punch of vitamin A benefits over time. Now another hot topic you're gonna see a lot in skincare right now is Bacuchiol. Ba, Cucci. Oh. And essentially, Bacuchiol is kind of like a retinoid-like compound that's produced naturally. It's like nature's retinoid, if you will. You're going to see it a lot right now in Inculus products. Inculus has a product with it. Biosans does, Ula Henriksen does, and Herbivore does as well. Touted as being antimicrobial, anti-inflammatory, antioxidant-y, and much more as well. And so while it's newer to the game, there's not a lot of research backing it up. Studies in tandem with actual retinol 
have kind of given very parallel results in terms of anti-aging, acne benefits. So they're kind of seeing it as a functional analog to retinols, retinoids. But the big claim behind this is while the studies are giving it similar benefits to retinoid in itself, it's also showing that it doesn't give the same level of irritation and inflammation as retinoids do at the same strength. So I'll give you the tea and the lowdown on what vitamin A is, what retinoids are, how it works, what the different kinds are. Let's talk about including it into your routine. Retinoids, again, the gold standard for so many different things, and it's been proven to do a lot for the skin. But through the different forums, the more direct you are to retinoic acid, the higher the likelihood of irritation. So incorporating into your skincare routine kind of gets a little sus. Reason being, it can cause irritation, it can cause inflammation, it can cause dryness in the skin, and it has the potential to cause uh, purging as well in about a two to six week period when you start it. I didn't have those problems, <laughs> but it is possible. How to include them into your routine. Again, high strength, you really have to cut back initially in how you use it and what you combine it with. I really recommend kind of give your skin a break a couple days before and a couple days after from exfoliating and any other high strength actives and start by using it only one time a week, maybe once every two weeks for a while. The reason being you need your skin to be able to kind of acclimate to the ingredients you need to see how your skin reacts to it. And then you need to give your skin time to recuperate from it so that you're not compromising your moisture barrier as a result. My personal recommendation for how to introduce it to your routine in terms of the sequence is more than likely after a moisturizer or a heavy cream that's going to act as a good buffer under the retinoid so you can still get the benefit of the retinoid but it's buffered a little bit by the moisturizer so you're not getting the full brunt of the effect after two to four weeks of one time a week you can start amping it up to two times a week i've been using retinoids now for about two to three years i started with low strength retinoids from the ordinary and then i pretty much just jumped straight there from two prescription strength i started at a 0.01 percent tretinoin cream and then i jumped up to a 0.1 percent tretinoin cream which i've been doing now for like six months Since since I've been using retinoids for so long, my skin's acclimated to it. I actually use mine directly after my hydrators underneath a moisturizer. Since I don't need that buffer, I find that I get a little bit more of a direct result from that retinoid. Once your skin is more used to the retinoids and you can figure out the level of acceptance of high strength actives, then you can start kind of bringing those high strength exfoliators and peels and active acids into your skincare routine again around retinoids. But I really don't recommend doing them on the same night in the same routine as you do your tretinoin or your retinoids only because you're increasing the risk of irritation to your skin. So I will do exfoliating acids the day before and the day after, not in the morning of or the morning after tretinoin. I give my skin some time. If I do a high strength peel, like the 30% AHA, 2% BHA from the ordinary, I give my skin a good two days. And then no matter what, because the retinoids are increasing skin cell turnover and you're kind of, and you're exposing those fresh young skin cells to UV radiation, wear your sunscreen. No matter what, when you're using high strength actives, you need to wear sunscreen, but really make sure you are lathering it on generously to really protect your skin. Because again, retinoids, amazing anti-aging ingredients, but if you're not protecting your skin from the sun, really no point. Literally all the work you're doing, useless. So let's wear your sunscreen, trust me. And that's the tea on retinoids. You have a lot of options and it can kind of get kind of confusing, but basically get as directly close to the retinoic acid as you can. There are other options and alternatives coming out now, but retinoic acid or tretinoin is the most studied, most proven, the gold standard version of it. But if you need to, retinaldehyde's an amazing option. Bacuchiol, a promising option. Retinols, oh well. A good option if you're starting out because they're lower strength, they're not as irritating. So. Yeah, that's vitamin A or retinoids simplified. If you have any questions, because I know this is really confusing, I understand. Leave this down in the comments below. I always interact with my subscribers or people who leave comments in the comment section just to kind of talk things out and interact. If you want to see more of these, give this a thumbs up so I know that you are liking these and watching these. Hit that subscribe button and notification bell and follow me on my socials. And for now, that's it. Thanks, guys. Bye.